Hello and welcome. My name is David Hoffman, and in this episode, we will be taking a look at using interrupts to drive this LED display. Hey, David. What? Hey, David. What? Oh, nothing. Just doing my part to interrupt you. Well, now you know. Somewhere along the line, a disembodied demon's voice has attached itself to me, and, well, it just tends to be pretty dang annoying. But... Let's go ahead and move forward. Hopefully it won't bother us too much. I hope, please. In this project, we'll be writing three main blocks of code. They are system config, our interrupt service routine, and the main system code. Using interrupts is a great way to run code that needs to repeat on a known repeating basis or on a unpredictable basis. In this lesson, we'll be using a timer to control how frequently this three-digit LED display gets updated. Now, I'm using this LED Learning Center, but you can create your own circuit on a breadboard as well. Let's start by setting up the microcontroller clock speed to 16 MHz. First, we need to tell the compiler that we'll be running at 16 MHz by adding the directive, define XTEL frequency 16 million. Now, let's define some labels to make referencing the ports display is tied to easier. Define display underscore port, port A. Define digit 1 underscore on, lat C0. Let's copy this line and paste it twice, then change the lat C0 to lat C1 and this other lat C0 to lat C2. And change digit 1 underscore on to digit 2 underscore on and this last digit one underscore on to digit three underscore on. And let's add two global variables. The first is character display underscore memory three and int display underscore show equal zero. So David, what's the purpose of global variables? Huh, that's actually a good question. Global variables always exist whereas a local variable only exists for as long as the function that declared it is active. There's more to it than that, and I'll probably get into that more in a later video. You were supposed to give an answer I could make fun of. Try harder next time. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, so display underscore memory is a global variable that will always exist and consist of three memory locations. This will allow our code to update what is shown on the LED display. Since the display will be run by an interrupt service routine, that's all we'll need to do to show the data. Let's create the system config function now, which will configure the ports and internal registers that we need to set up. Let's start with the internal oscillator. And for that, we're going to use the oscon register, and we're going to set that to equal 0b0. One 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 zero zero zero. Next, we need to set port A to 255. This display has a common anode, which means to turn a segment on, we have to ground that segment. Since we want all the segments of port A to be off when we start up, we're going to go ahead and set all of these bits to high. Tris A equals zero. It sets port A to be an output port and Ansel A equals zero. This configures port A as a digital input-output port. Now let's do port C, which is only slightly different. Port C equals zero, Tris A equals zero, Ansel C equals zero. We'll be using timer zero to control how often the display interrupt routine is run. Let's take a look at the option register, which controls timer zero. Bit 7, we're not concerned with pull-up resistors on this project, so let's leave this set to 1. Bit 6, we're not using this either, so let's leave it set to 0. Bit 5, we will be using the internal clock as the timer source, so this needs to be set to 0. Bit 4, it doesn't matter, so a 0 or 1. And bit 3, this bit enables the timer 0 prescaler, so set this to 0. Bit 2 through 0. These bits set the prescaler count. For our purposes, let's set this to 1 to 32. Now, let's go through the math and see how all that works out. The prescaler is incremented every instruction cycle. 
which in this case is our clock frequency divided by 4, which effectively gives us an increment rate of 4 MHz, or 250 nanoseconds. The prescaler is set to 32, so every time the prescaler hits 32, timer 0 will be incremented. So, 25 nanoseconds times 32 equals 8 microseconds. Now we take that 8 microseconds and multiply that by 256, which is counter zero's maximum count, which gives us 2.048 milliseconds. So the display update routine will be called every 2.048 milliseconds. This gives us an effective refresh rate of 488. That's 1 divided by 2.048 milliseconds. So the display is updated 488 times every second. And this means each digit will be on 162 times per second. Now this is a pretty fast refresh rate, so I expect to have a pretty solid display. But if the display ends up being too dim, we can decrease the refresh rate to brighten it up. Okay, so let's add option underscore reg equal 0 B 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 That was a mouthful. You should try pronouncing my name sometimes. <laughs> and let's make sure timer 0 is equal to 0. And lastly, let's turn on timer 0's interrupt. That's it for the config routine. Now we need a 7 segment lookup table to take the value we want to display and convert it to the code we need to show it actually on the display. I've already got this built, so I just need to insert it into the code. Up next, our display interrupt service routine. To do this, we'll use the interrupt name when declaring our routine. So, void interrupt display underscore update. The first thing in this routine we need to do is disable global interrupts. We do this so the MCU is not interrupted by another interrupt while servicing the current interrupt. Next, we need to clear the timer zero interrupt flag. If we don't do this as soon as we enable global interrupts again, we'll get called right back into the interrupt service routine, in essence creating an endless loop. Uh, remember that display underscore show global variable we created a while ago? Well, now we're going to use it. So, if display underscore show is equal to zero, digit three underscore on equals zero, which turns off digit three, display port equals seven seg lookup, display underscore memory, brackets zero. This will take the data stored in memory zero, send it to seven seg lookup, and then look up the code we need to show that digit on the seven segment display. And then it returns that data, which is then put in display port. Digit 1 equal 1. This turns on digit 1 and shows the data we just put on the display port. Now that we have this routine ready, let's go ahead, copy it, paste it, and then modify it for digit 2. Change digit 3 to digit 1. Change digit 1 to digit 2. And display memory 0 to display memory 1. Paste again for the last routine and change digit 1 to digit 2, digit 2 to digit 3, and display memory 1 to display memory 2. Now we need to update display show. So if plus plus display show is greater than 2, display show equal 0. As display show increments, each digit will turn on and off, allowing all three digits a turn being on. And the last thing we need to do is enable global interrupts again, and our service routine is complete. <laughs> Would you believe we're almost done? Well, we are. Now we just need to add a few lines of code in our main routine. Let's create a simple counter to show information on the display. First, let's add a call to system config so we can get everything set up. Next, global interrupts equal one. Let's add three lines to clear our display memory. And let's create an endless while loop. Add a delay command and let's set it to 1000, effectively one second. Let's increment digit two, which is the rightmost digit on the display. Now, 
If display memory 2 is greater than 15, let's reset it to 0 and increment display memory 1. David, check your index. You're screwed. Oh, crap. Yeah, I guess I did screw up. Uh, I need to fix these brackets. Okay, that's fixed and we can add the next check. So, if display memory 1 is greater than 15, let's reset it to 0 and increment display memory 0. I do believe that does it. As you can see, nowhere in main do we ever call the display update routine. So if the interrupt doesn't work, then the display will never show anything at all. Let's compile and give it a try. Yeah, it works perfectly. It's too slow. Make it faster. Yeah, we can do that. Let's change the 1000 to 500. Still too slow. Make it faster. I think we successfully demonstrated how to use interrupts at this point. Make it faster or I'll start singing. Fine. I'll make it faster. How about a quarter second? There you go. There's a quarter second that's counting pretty fast now and looks pretty good. No thanks to a certain whatever the hell he is. That's it for this episode. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions or you have an idea on a specific uh, tutorial you'd like to see, please uh, leave a comment below. And if you enjoyed watching this episode and would like to see more episodes on uh, electronics and programming microcontrollers and, uh, you know, some other fun stuff as well, please click on the subscribe button below. 99 bottles of beer on the wall. 99 bottles of beer. Take one down. Pass it around. 98 bottles of beer on the wall. 98 bottles of beer on the wall. 98 bottles of beer. Dick went down, pass it around, 97 bottles of beer on the wall, 97 bottles of beer on the wall, 97 bottles of beer. Dick went down, pass it around, 96 bottles of beer on the wall.